uh, yeah, I wanted to make, uh, give a little talk maybe on uh, the Latin language in response to Sisi Gersel, S-Y-Z-Y-G-Y-C-C's uh, video on, on Latin. Uh, my object is not to engage in some type of polemic nor uh, to try to sell something, I, uh, I simply want to express some of my thoughts or views on, on the matter of, of Latin, or the study of Latin as a language I've been studying for a long, long time, as a matter of fact. In my childhood, I was already learning uh, Latin and Greek, Greek words for the, the animals because I was very interested in uh, natural history. So it's just, even before studying Latin at the age of 14, I was, I was doing Latin in a, in a way. Well, uh, I think uh, all languages are interesting. Uh, I don't think we should limit ourselves to a single type of language or have the idea that we should only study languages that we can speak with native speakers because uh, uh, that is only one possible motivation out of, of, out of many for studying languages. I mean, there's many other reasons. Languages are interesting in and of themselves. Uh, every language has its own shapes and forms and interesting syntactical patterns. And in the case of Latin, you also have a great culture that goes with it. Um, you can read, you know, you can read a lot of these guys like Seneca and Marshall in, in, in their original languages and that they're not the same as translate in translation. I remember when I was studying Latin, somebody said you could, uh, a long, long time ago, somebody said, well, you can read these guys in English translation. Well, the fact is, uh, most of the translations, no matter how good they are, don't really capture the, uh, the voice of, of, these, uh, of these great writers. Okay, um, yeah. Uh, antiquity in itself is very interesting. It's like visiting another country. Studying Latin is, is one of the ways, it's one of the portals to the, to the ancient world, just like studying ancient Greek or studying Hebrew or whatnot. So it's a very important uh, portal to antiquity. And antiquity is just as interesting, in my view, as, as going to these modern countries and, uh, and walking their streets and, uh, and uh, buying things in the shops or whatnot. Um, okay, uh, interesting thing about Latin is it's a language that has survived its uh, own funeral uh, more than once, more than twice, I don't know how many times, but it continues to have its uh, fluent speakers. You can go to the University of Kentucky and engage yourself with uh, a number of professors that, that speak it quite fluently and hopefully uh, acquire the language, uh, the spoken language from them. So yeah, it's, it's alive, Latin is alive, but for the very reason that it has known how to survive its own funerals. I think it would be cool if more people were, were using it as an interpersonal language or a, an interlanguage. I don't know, I think that would be pretty cool. But anyways, it is now. There's already uh, a group out there. You can listen to the news. Uh, there's this guy, Scorpio Martianus, who does his uh, really cool newscast in Latin. He talks about very modern type things like space, space voyages all in, in Latin. So yeah, it's a, a language that still can be used for just about anything. Uh, maybe with the help of some neologisms, I don't know. Then, um, going back to this living versus dead language, well I think if languages as beautiful as Russian and Chinese became extinct, heaven forbid, but I think if those languages would if Russian became extinct, for instance, it would still be just as worth studying as it is today. Uh, I'm totally convinced of that. So this business about how many native speakers or living speakers, or I, I don't, I don't find that much in that. Okay, well, that was just to give a little talk and give some points of view uh, on this matter of, of Latin. Dominus vobiscum.